said, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. They really thought they were going to get something worthwhile. Now they realize they can't do anything with it. Yeah. And so they don't care. They just right. lost interest. But, but they still want to stop. This is the anchor from the San Fernando. You see how large it is. The, the ship was about 100 feet. Remember, it's all wood, heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, and this was our crew for the San Fernando. And these were the rosaries. Jeff, this is Bob's son Jeff, he found the first one. And each one was unique. Every little bead was hand carved. Every wow. little link in a chain was hand carved. And if you had it in your hand, you would know for sure that's true. And each cross or crucifix hand carved front and back. This is what they call the life ring. Each that's the way it looked when it came out. How'd Gold you sell is a your noble stuff, metal. Bob? Do you have one guy? Well, this each near, medallion right, right represents yeah. a, a, a part of the life of the of the owner. Right. Uh, this was uh, the one with the jet beads, and this one was a cross that at one time was enamel, right but the enamel now, wore away like from the action of the sand. Yeah. This Getting one, the day bag. after Jeff found the first Lord one, Bob was diving with him and he brought Banks, this whole really one up and he put it around me and he said, you're the first person to wear this rosary in over wow. 200 years. Bob's a real romantic. Who is this? That's me, yeah. <laughs> a real romantic. And this was the bronze cannon. You see that this chunk is on of this stuff step. on the end of it? Yeah. That's, that's the only part that was sticking out. A little half of that. Yeah, it was like this. Yeah, it was like really? that sticking out. Really? That's on the deck of the Castilian. This is on the uh, lawn of the Muse Cannon Museum. It was a fabulous home park, really. This was the America anchor coming up. That's Paul. Paul was our diver. He taught our divers. He was a pilot and he would they would fly around look for wrecks. And um, he also taught uh, gun training. Hmm. And this Never is bringing it up on the like Castilian. Oh, yeah. This is from oh, the Lou. Lou Key. Mm -hmm. This is from the HMS Lou. And it was a, a, a copper lid for a powder keg. Huh. They didn't want to blow themselves up from a spark, so they powder keg lids were proper. Hmm. These were the dividers uh, <coughs> from the loo. This is Jimbo. They used uh -huh. them for a sounding. The they wow. put them in the water. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. water was. Oh, well, like that. This yeah. is yeah. now yeah. in Penny yeah. Camp. Yeah. Yep, it is. That's the one. <laughs> Y'all found one. that? The very one. No, no, no. Bob helped them. I got gotcha. you. And this was when Bob. Oh, it was made for there. Yeah. And he helped him place it. That's awesome. Bob went to Texas and did uh, modern salvage, 1800 stuff, and 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 um, uh, destroyers and that. And that's you jumping off? That's yeah. Bob. yeah. <laughs> I cut his head He's off. daredevil. <laughs> oh, you see that, Bubba? <laughs> and he's not jumping though. He's just he's uh, got a he's got a. Uh, uh, room or something out there. This oh, okay. is uh, Bob built, this is two inches high, it's an actual working Miller Dunn helmet that Bob uh, created for this puppet, uh, which uh, the uh, the fellow made a little um, uh, canvas costume Did for it and used it under, uh, Art under in, a, in a, uh, a I knew Art real well. I knew. We, we, we talked a lot together and he showed me things. And, Bob uh, went to Orange, Texas. He we brought, never did get to go out to uh, uh, dive uh, together. Oh, what are they called? Bob, I, tell me this. Ship's in. This is a destroyer. Bob and the actor, John Wayne, were the only two civilians allowed to own a destroyer. Oh, really? By law, he had to cut it up, which he did. And uh, th this is a minesweeper. Mid, mid, a larger you know, mine There's sweeper. only two people up on full blown civilian. Destroyer. <laughs> awesome. And this is the uh, uh, minesweeper, small one going through orange. They had to take the light poles down on one side of the street. That, that this is a there large to go. One. Hey, guns and cannons blistering <laughs> all over. You can see the, the dome and the barrels yeah. that, that, that they there. And this is modern salvage. This is where he uh, raised the Pleiades off where it had grounded on a reef. And this is Bahamas. It, he was asked by a friend of a friend to go and evaluate a lease area. And he found that it was good 1800s, you know, but not 
emeralds and diamonds and all the stuff the guy had been told. Uh, this, we were working 35 miles from land, that's Isaac's Rock, and Bob would have said to me, if you want to get on land, that's, that's me on land. Oh. Uh, and I said, yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. This is Majolica ware, so in good like condition as this plate was. It would sell for like $2,500 dollars a plate it's a wow. it's no longer made it was a it's a pottery from the 1600s this is a balamine jug and you may have seen some of these with the old old man of the sea you know with the beard and everything yeah. and those sell for like quarter you know half a million wow. and up this would sell for like quarter million it doesn't have the old That's man amazing. on it this is a silver jaguar from a wreck in the bahamas these are gold bars from the wreck in the Bahamas. In a little while, you'll see how they differ from the ones, you know, from the Marquesas. Mm -hmm. You'll notice that there's no tax stamp. This wreck sank. It became known as the Tumbanga wreck because the Tumbanga bars, which were contraband, they were so plentiful that they sank the wreck. What? Yeah, no they didn't. They didn't pay contraband. any attention to the over overweight, gotcha. overweight, <laughs> right to the bottom. These were the cannons from uh, from the wreck that had the beer bottles and all of that on it. And it had two full barrels of perfectly preserved china. Really? All, it was straw and everything, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. We didn't realize at the time how much money you could get for that china. <laughs> we were thinking, you know, golden yeah. bottles and stuff. This is the butt end of a mortar, bronze mortar, grown into the reef. This is along the corner of the wreck area. Which reef? Of this wreck area. And Bob went to where he knew the pirates used to go. And there was Peter Hines, who was made an admiral by the Dutch, for his plundering of the ships as they came, the French and the Spanish ships. And five of his ships sank in a hurricane, one of which was recovered with a billion dollars plus in treasure on it. Wow. We believe that this may mark one of Peter Hines' wrecks. Um, that was another reason we were interested in pursuing, uh, you know, uh, a, um, a lease in, in the Bahamas, but 50000 and no luck after two years. Uh, they get all of your research, you know, because yeah. you have to tell them where it is. Sure. And uh, we really not, don't want to go that rocky. Mm. This is from Panama, the country. They asked Bob to go there and train their archaeologists in search and recovery uh, and, you know, documentation. These are mule Excuse shoes. Me, this this was a case of, uh, this was a case of scissors. They each had its own leather pouch with a, with a uh, you know, a marking. This was a, ca a case of bottles that would have had olives or something in it, a pewter lid with the, with the uh, Did you tell the them marking. about the whole shoes? I'm oh, I told okay. them about the little mule shoes. Oh, okay. There's more to the story. This is a case of sword blades. Wow. You, this is a customs house. Big as this. Uh, two stories high. At one time, research said that the customs house was stacked to the ceiling with silver and gold and out in the streets as much, waiting for the king's ships. They didn't have the Panama Canal. So the ships would have to come up on the isthmus of, on the Portobello, and they would park there, and they would load up the little burrows, or sh little burrow shoes, right. bring them over, while it's standing there, sword blades, the king would send sword blades and mule shoes. They would send the gold and silver to the king. So you always knew which direction the ship was coming from right. based on what was on board at the time. <laughs> okay. Here again, you see, this is, was the head of their, uh, this is Wayne, who is our partner and good friend, Bob's best man at our wedding. He does research in England, which has a lot of research about the sunk ships. And this is uh, Nilda, who was the head of their archaeological area in Panama, the country. This, again, you see the uh, damage done during the hurricane by the ship. This is Bob on the front of Sunshine magazine with the first gold bar, the wreck that he found. He's the acknowledged finder of it. 
he didn't get anything from it, it was stolen from him, but this was the king's man. This is what he used as grappling hook. That was heavy, huh? To drag. Yeah, they oh, drag yeah. it. <laughs> they're, 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 they're trying to hang, hang the wreck site. Oh. They, they when they found the wreck. they send somebody down to look. But right away, an, a storm came through, and when they came back, their grappling hook had pulled away. Bob, based on the research, as he said, found the wreck in three days' time, found the grappling hook, found the anchors marching along, found e within you know, found, this was later, after a week, the gold bar. This was the, uh, the bell from the wreck. This is a similar bell from a wreck that he worked in Mexico. It's always, a, you know, the home country, Spain owned it all. Wow. This was the copper cauldron dug into the bottom of the ocean by three, seven feet across. When they got it up, they laid down and it had pictures taken. This was the jeweled sword when it was uh, re restored. It had this uh, gold and emeralds and silver and diamonds. Really? Yep. This all intact right there. Oh yeah. Just can't see it. Yep, not yet. This are the gold bars. This was a cape chain like the king would wear on his velvet cape. Uh, emeralds and diamonds and rubies. This was a, a gold disc. They, this was like almost 24 karat gold, 23 and 3 karat gold, all the gold is because it was mined and just made into stuff right. for the convenience of shipping it to the king. The gold disc, gold bars on display, the gold coins, uh, pewter plates. This is an astrolabe, uh, bronze, navigational device, they don't make them anymore. They have sold for as much as three quarters of a million dollars for an astrolabe hole, which they found all the parts of that one. This was a gold chain from the wreck. And this was a way of not losing money out of your pocket, especially gold. Each one of these links had a specific weight. So if they were traveling, oh, yeah, they right. knew exactly how much, but they didn't have to worry about losing all these right. little, you know, coins out of their pockets. Money they, chain. Yeah, this was this uh, silver bar, 80 pounds. Yeah. Look at him grunt. Uh, <laughs> this is the uh, archivist. I love that picture of Bob, so that's why it's in there. Uh, and that's his very favorite picture. That's him after uh, during that one day, as they recovered this particular uh, uh, load of treasure from his wreck. I found. The, Seven gold bars yeah. snorkeling on the site. Yeah, really? snorkeling yeah. looking down. Middle of nowhere, <laughs> but he, how deep? Huh? How deep? How deep was it? Uh, the water. Twenty-two feet. Okay. Yeah. He lay down on the deck, and the divers started bringing all the and putting this on he him. And then a Don <laughs> Lambert know. took this picture. <laughs> Don Lambert took the picture. And, and that, that, um, those little bitty gold coins in my hand there. Yeah, I didn't even notice them. Yeah. 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 Plus the salt. Yeah, there's like a uh, marble cannonball. That's a marble cannonball. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Huh. We had that bronze cannonball. Yeah. Which I I loaned to a banker who asked me if he could if his daughter could use it for show and tell, and I said yes. He said, I'm warning you, you may not get the cannonball back. And I said it'll be alright. Oh, that was nice. And it didn't, it didn't come back. Uh, it's amazing. I love that picture in front. Let me see. That. Yeah, that's Bob. Bob said I, he wanted to illustrate this. People have no idea. You know, you talk about it, but the but the action when you see the mm -hmm. bit, you know what the a, process. A, yeah, what a ship endures during yeah. her, her right. Journey, what it endures, and those were wooden ships, and that. That was a, the thing about, and it's it's documented in his biography, where uh, the, sh the ship that he discovered, it broke, and he knew. The research said that, that it hit a pinnacle, reared up, and sank in 60 feet of water. Mm. But Bob knew that wasn't what happened. He knew that in a storm, the Admiralty procedure would have put out anchors to try to hold off of the reef to, right. to hold out and so that's my, I'm when this particular 
a group of ships went into Cuba. Two of the ships were laying on their side and work was done to them. Now there was a weakness in the ships of that period, a long, not to break this way, but to break this way along the side. And later on they put in, what did they put in? Hooker beans probably. Hooker beans, hooker beans. beans. Yeah, to stop that from happening. But at that time they hadn't done that. So if the ships, ships would are, actually the weak split from sailing and mm -hmm. pulling it to the side like that. Because they, they want to lay on the side. All along, where right. the deck, so the deck would come right off. Yeah, of and they had cargo in the hold, and they were always wanting to lay on their side. A sailboat's natural way of moving is on its side, not straight up. And so it was continually working against you know, itself. Young and young Bob, Bob knew that what had happened was. This Listen ship had guys. Un undergone the these repairs, and instead of hitting a pinnacle and rearing up, where these things what had happened three was pieces, like the, sunk, the, the uh, started, waves from the storm, the new storm, the had broken it where it was weakened, I heard that and the I was front young. of it just well, well, they, they, they <laughs> reared up, broke away, and, and drifted the into the shallows. Out. But the, there, the there bottom were, of it, spot laden with gold, was all the way silver, around by that. So they went directly where the, the sails right there. In the, in the, so in the, again, all the when people started searching the, in the area, Bob told them to search. They were weak. They were looking yeah. for and a pinnacle happened, that didn't exist. Right. Bob knew. The whole deck would he knew come it didn't exist. He knew it didn't exist. He talked about it. He talked about it with Art McKee. He talked about it with David Fossil, who lived in Key West. And he said, "Look, there's a pinnacle that they can see. They can see it. They got it all wrong." The guy is telling what he thinks he's seeing happen, but it isn't what happened. This right. is what happened. And this is where the wreck went, which was true. In fact, they found the king's right, graph right. notes along that same line and the anchors and everything else. But <clears throat> How old was he when he started diving? Bob, when, when, how old were you when you started diving? Uh, when he, huh? In your 20s, you would have been in your 20s. When you started diving. Oh, God. Yeah, the first time. Really? That I yeah, 15, first, uh, 15 years old. Your first shipwreck. First well, hard hat. Not in my name. Yeah. Just, uh, when was the first ship what you What was the first shipwreck you dove on? Buddy's house while I'm down here in the summers. The we went out in the, uh, the, 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 the boat we was on. Was a, it was a, a called the Vixen. You dove on a shipwreck. And we dove, no. It, that, that, that was the dive boat. That was and we just dove on... Uh, 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 so modern wrecks and stuff. We hadn't got into the uh, Spanish uh, uh, guy. Well, I got a company stuff, yeah. down here, but it, it's oh, he actually uh, uh, addressed out of my. You don't want to tell people how old you are. Huh? I said you don't want to tell people how old you are. <laughs> no, no. I tell you what, I do have. I got to be a good uh, mystery right there. Uh, <laughs> what was the first wreck you dove on? What was the first wreck you dove on? Spanish, Spanish type wreck. Yeah. That was the yeah. San Fernando. It was the, uh, oh, let me think. Uh, but no, it could have been Art McKees. Yeah. Not well, Art let McKees. Let me locate it and see what, what I can do. The Ca uh, Al Monte and Capitana, Art McKee's Rex? Yeah. You dove on those first. Yeah, yeah it's true. Before he discovered the San, the San Fernando off of Marathon. Right. And before he discovered uh, yeah, the I got Delta Show off of Marathon. I've, I've got about that because uh, sure uh, 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 at the end, uh, I, mean, I, I, I couldn't uh, remember if I ever dove with Yeah, that. yeah <laughs> I remember because whenever uh, Don Lambert, who was a good diving buddy of his, uh, would come to Marathon, he was a fireman and he would come on his right. vacations. He always wanted right, let me to go get to it to you. And, uh, uh, Rex will, and dive I them again, and so effort. they would go up. There. We actually, we've actually, he's actually been yeah, okay to like another, a, just uh, a, you know, like a, uh, a, a Sheffield something. Westman's holiday for them. And, and uh, we always what, what, would what dive your, uh, uh, the San Fernando because it was off the marathon. We could dive it from home. Right. Really helped a lot, you know, on the cost. And let me get this thing to my Whenever he wasn't working in the Bahamas or elsewhere, we would always go back to San Fernando, and then we would go to other wrecks that people, other people wanted to do. And at one point, a friend of ours said, 
yeah. uh, came from Tampa, and he said, I want to go to the Secret Well, you know who's got rep. that lease now is... So, uh, Bob said, okay, Mike we'll go Karna, to the Secret Rep. Well, there's a local dive show going on over the day until Bob... Secret Rep, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. And Bob went out, got the chart, and showed him his little X on there. And it was all pretty tight, right? So he says, uh, so he's telling Bob, oh, he's persistent. Uh, you know, I told the Aladdin of where it is. We're the only ones who know. So the day that uh, Joe from Tampa when it came wanted in, to go to the secret yeah, back, we headed out in that ball. direction. And Violetti like was uh, looking around and looking uh, around for it. And he said, that, right? Bob, I'm looking for the secret rock. Here. Bob said, don't worry, I'll take you right to it. <laughs> so, so Joe says, the secret rock. Everybody claims the secret rock, but Bob's the only one who really knows how secret. <laughs> Is it? Bob was the one, you know, that, and he took other people there, which was his way, of, you know, that was his way. And, uh, Let me say something. Yeah. What's those last names? Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. This is an honor to be with Bob Jordan and Pat Jordan. It's the most famous treasure hunters around. Yeah. And we're in the Florida Keys, and this is Zell Robinson, yeah. senior. AKA Baba. Baba. AKA Baba. <laughs> AKA Baba.